Never Stop Learning, week 212. We're going to take a quick look at the Magic Wand tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. All right, so in order to activate this tool, you want to come over here to the left, and you're going to find the Tools panel. Now, right here, you see the Quick Selection tool. If you click and hold, you're going to find that the Magic Wand tool is in the same stack. Now, it's at the bottom of the stack, so once I have this guy highlighted and I release, you notice my cursor changes up, and that's letting me know the tool is activated, and it's ready to go. Now, if you want to bring back the Quick Selection tool, just hit Shift-W on your keyboard, and that's going to bring that back for you. All right, Shift-W brings back the Magic Wand tool, but let's say you were to switch tools. Let's go to the Move tool, or let's say you went over to one of your brushes, and you want to go back to the Magic Wand tool. Just hit the W key, because it's already at the top of the stack, it's going to activate that tool for you. All right, so let's see how this guy works. Over here in my document, I got this flower, and I'm just going to click at the bottom right here in this little flower petal. I'll click once, and the magic wand tool is magically creating a selection for me. Well, it's not really magic, uh, so let's take a look at what's going on. If you take a look at the top, it says that our sample size is set to point sample. So that means it's looking at that point, that exact pixel that I clicked on, and selecting all the pixels that are identical. Now, over here on the right, we have a tolerance set to 32, so they're not going to be identical. It's getting up to a 32 color value difference of the original one, grabbing all those guys together, and that's how it's making the selection. All right, so if you have a zero tolerance, it's going to grab less uh, different pixels, but if you have a higher tolerance, then it's going to grab a larger variety of pixels. All right, to the right of that, I have this guy turned on, and this is going to have smoother edges uh, right there for my transition. Basically, it's anti-aliasing, so it's going to smooth out my edges. If I turn this off, then I'm going to have more jagged edges in there. So I like leaving this guy turned on. To the right of that, this is going to turn on contiguous uh, pixels only. Uh, over here, sample colors from composite image. This used to be called um, sample all layers. And then because I have a selection right now, I have access to the refine edge function. So whenever you finish off creating your initial selection, then you want to jump into the refine edge to, you know, kind of clean things up a bit. All right, I'm going to hit cancel to get out of this. Now, when you want to deselect something, just hit command D. All right, next I want to start going through these guys a little bit deeper. All right, back, we start off with sample size and it's set to point sample. So what does that mean? I'm going to zoom in on this flower petal over here at the bottom again. And now we're able to see things at the pixel level. All right, so there's different color pixels in here. And if I were to click on one of these guys, just do a little click right in here. Notice it's selecting all the guys that have the same color value. But because we have this tolerance set to 32, it's also looking up to 32 color differences and grabbing those guys as well. All right, so I'm going to deselect again, Command D. Now, if you're not sure where you're clicking, just uh, hold down the Caps Lock key. And it's going to switch you over to this uh, precise cursor. And then when you click on it, you notice exactly which one you're on. I'm going to turn this off for now. Maybe I'll just zoom in a little bit more. There we go. All right, great. Now, I'm going to turn this tolerance all the way down to zero. Now, when I do a point sample, check that out. There's not much variation within these guys. All right, so it's just looking at this one and selecting the neighboring pixels. I'm going to hit Command D. Instead of sample size set to point sample, I'm going to click on this little drop down menu and switch over to 3x3 three three average. I'll click on this guy. I'll take a look at this pixel right here. Now, if I click on it, it's not just looking at this one pixel. It's looking at this pixel that I clicked on, the two that are on the right and left of it, the three that are above it, and the three that are below it. So, all nine of these guys are in the mix. All right, so it's going to average out all nine of these, take a look at those, and then make a selection based off of that. All right, so Command D to deselect that. Now, over here in the drop down menu, you have several different averages you could use. In my workflow, I tend to stick somewhere between 3x3 three three and 11x11, 11 11, but it's just going to depend on the size of your document and the um, contrast in the colors there. All right, escape to get rid of that. Now, let me zoom back out. There we go. All right, great. So, my tolerance, I'm probably going to bring this guy. Instead of zero, because if I click now, notice I'm just having a really small selection. But if I bring this guy back up to the default, which is 32, I'm going to deselect this and create a new selection. All right, so notice my selection has grown. All right, Command D. Now, if I bring this guy up to an arbitrary number, let's say 53, click in here. Again, it's grown even more than that. 
All right, we have it set to anti-aliasing, so we have smooth edges there. But I wanted to talk about this guy a little bit more. Sample only contiguous pixels. So all it's doing is sampling basically the neighboring pixels. So if I turn this feature off, deselect this guy, and then make a click in the same area, check that out. It's a vastly different selection than what we had earlier. Now we have some holes in our selection. Now that's not necessarily bad. In some workflows, this is actually really important for it to work this way. That's why we're able to turn it on or off. You know, it just depends on what you need. So I'm going to deselect this, and I'm going to leave mine turned on for now. All right, so this guy over here, this is going to sample all the layers. Basically, it's looking at the composite image all in one. So for the most part, I have mine turned on because I want the magic wand tool to see the same colors that I'm seeing. I don't want it to see a hidden color that might be inside the layer. All right, now that I've made some changes, what if I want to save this tool off? Well. You come over here in the upper left, so a drop down menu is going to allow you to save off this preset, and that way you could use it in different projects later. And you can make different magic wand tool settings. I'm going to hit escape to get out of that. Now, I want you guys to play around with all these different settings, and don't worry, because you could always come back over here to the upper left, right click on this, and then choose reset all tools. The reason I like showing that is once you click OK, it's going to bring everything back to how it was by default. And for me, that's going to allow me to do a lot more playing around with these settings. So there you have it, folks. That's a quick look at the Magic Wand tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015.